everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today you may notice that I am looking a bit more fancier than usual and there is a very good reason for that. So if you're like me and you've been in lockdown for a very long time now then you may have binged a few shows like I have, one of which being the new show on Netflix, Bridgerton. So I watched Bridgerton at the start of January and I am not exaggerating when I say it took me a day to watch the entire season because I was hooked. I fell hook, line and sinker for it. It was so good. I mean, you can't really blame people for being so obsessed with it. It's got great costumes, great hair, great wigs, some lovely specimens in it. And I mean, it's also got the queen, my queen, Julie Andrews narrating it. And let me tell you, I didn't know she narrated it. So see, when I first watched that first episode and I heard her voice, I almost started crying. <laughs> so obviously in terms of hair and makeup, the hair is a lot more elaborate than the makeup is in this show. However, that being said, I have not done a natural makeup look since I started my channel in July. It's now January. The kind of no makeup makeup look that they go for in Bridgerton and that was obviously very reminiscent of the time it was set is one of the most difficult makeup looks you can do. I'm um, Literally, I would take a winged liner over a no makeup makeup look because you need to make sure everything just looks so clean and fresh and dewy and it's, it's a difficult thing to do. But that's what I'm here for today. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and turn this drab lump of coal into the diamond of the wedding season. <laughs> it's so cheesy, but I don't care. Let's go. <laughs> First things first, as with any makeup look you do, you want to make sure that you prep your skin really well, especially for a no makeup makeup look because the better your skin looks underneath, the better the makeup is going to look on top, the less makeup you're going to have to apply, the more natural you will look. Simples! <laughs> I'm just going to clip these little bits of hair back. Obviously your makeup prep is going to depend on the type of skin that you have. So I personally have oily skin, so that is the type of skin that I prep for. Um, but you can vary it depending on what your skin is like. I think the key to a no makeup makeup look is making sure that your skin is nice and moisturised. Even if you have oily skin, you can just strategically moisturise. It's going to make sure that the products sit nicely on the skin and don't cake up or separate or anything like that. It's just going to be flawless. I have already washed and toned my face. I'm now going to go in with some moisturiser. This is the Beauty Bay Thirst Class Moisturiser, which I've been really liking. So I've just dotted that about my face and you'll notice I've stayed away from the centre of my face. That's because this is where I mostly get oily. So although I do want that to be moisturised, I don't want the concentration of the product to be here. So I'm just going to work on the outskirts of my face first and then I will work it in towards the centre of my face. Kind of like the opposite way you do foundation. Once the majority of all that is set in, I'm then just going to lightly bring it into the T-zone where I get oiliest. So next up, because we're not going to be using any concealer underneath our eyes today, I'm going to go in with an eye cream. This is just a wee cheapy Superdrug one. Because the skin around your eyes is thinner, I often find that when you're putting like a foundation or concealer on top of it, because it's sometimes quite heavy, it just makes your skin look even thinner than it is. Most of the time people complain that their under eyes are cakey so I think the best way to avoid that is by using an eye cream. So many people exclude it from their prep routine but I think it's so important. So I'm just going to let that sink in for a minute while we talk about the primers that I'm going to be using today. This primer I'm going to be using is more suited to my oily skin and I also have quite large pores as well so it's going to be to combat the appearance of my pores and the oil, um, which I'll use mainly in my T-zone. The second primer that I'm going to use today is a super dewy makeup base that is just going to make your skin look like so radiant and healthy. When I say that I use two primers, people think that maybe that's a bit excessive. S to some people it is, but I have a skin type that doesn't allow me to do the makeup I want to do unless I prepare it and prime it well. If I had normal skin, I would only use one primer. 
I would only use like an illuminating base, but I don't I have oily porous skin because life. <laughs> so obviously for drier skin, you would want to go for a more hydrating primer, um, putting that where you get most dry, whether that's around your nose, around the sides of your face. Um, normal skin, you could just go in with an illuminating primer. It's completely dependent on your skin type. Um, first primer that I'm going in with is a pore filling primer and I'm just putting that right in the centre of my face. And then I'm going to work on tapping that on all of my problematic areas. So I do get like a lot of pores around here, like a lot of big pores. I'm sure to really work that product into it so that it doesn't lie on top of the skin, it kind of sinks into it. For my second primer, I'm going in with a much more illuminating and dewy look. And again, just like I did on the moisturiser, I'm concentrating that on the outer portions of my face first and then we'll work it inwards. But I'm just going to really nicely work that into the skin. So to start the makeup portion of this, if you're like me and you have spots, that because your skin's freaking out for some reason and you don't know why, if you have spots, you want to cover them up. You don't want to put a sheer foundation on top of them because a sheer foundation isn't going to cut it. This is a monster. We must attack the monster. So my favourite way to cover any imperfections or blemishes to get that kind of no makeup appearance is to go in with a very highly pigmented concealer or I'm going to be using Dermacolor from Krylon. It is the most pigmented corrective makeup that you can get or that I have tried anyway. What I'm gonna do is take that Dermacolor on a wee small brush like this and just place it over any imperfections and then use my ring finger just to blend it out. Definitely say when you're using a concealer and you want to like spot cover, you're definitely better to blend out with your finger because it's gonna melt it into the skin. There you can kind of see the difference that just the Dermacolor has made to all my like problematic areas. Um, it is a, a fantastic product to invest in, it is a bit more expensive but especially if you're like a working makeup artist and I would definitely say that is like top tier, use it. And now just to make sure that that makeup doesn't move once I apply my foundation, I'm just going to go in and set it with some translucent powder very lightly. My personal favourite foundation for an all makeup makeup look is MAC Face and Body because it's sheer but you can build it up quite easily as well. If you don't have a sheer foundation or you don't have one that you like then fear not, I am here to help. All you would have to do is take a bit of moisturiser, mix it in with a wee bit of foundation and then apply it and it kind of acts the same as like a BB cream would. Um, but I just like this one. <laughs> so I'm just taking the tiniest amount of foundation and I'm dotting that first in the centre of my face. With a brush, I'm just going to pick up some of the remaining product that is on my hand. Personally, just find this helps to blend everything a bit easier. And I'm also using quite a fluffy foundation brush to kind of enhance the sheerness of it. So just starting at the centre of the face and I'm going to work it out in circular motions. And you can see how much it blends out, like it blends into nothing, but that's fine. That's what we want. So then once I've got that foundation blended in really nicely, I'm just going to take my hands again and use it to melt the product into my skin. So I always think when you're doing a no makeup makeup look, you want to go in with more cream or BAM products because they're just going to appear more skin like and not be as textured as a powder would. If you don't like going in with cream products, you can use powder products, um, but just make sure you use quite a lot of setting spray and blend it out very nicely and don't apply too much, don't cake it on. A tiny wee bit of colour back into my cheeks, I'm going to go in with my Dr Pawpaw. This is a multi-purpose balm, um, but it's coloured. It's a multi-purpose balm that you can use for your lips, for your cheeks, for your eyes. And I'm just taking that on a really dense, fluffy brush and I'm just going to apply this kind of rosy colour to the apples of my cheeks. And I'm just stamping it on to get the colour on and it will also blend it out into the foundation. There you can see we're obviously looking very glowy and very healthy, a bit too much. So I'm gonna go in with some translucent powder and just set the center portion of my face and anywhere that needs taken down. And here. And just to bring a tiny wee bit of life back to the center of the face, I'm gonna layer on a bit of this. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter, which I used in my New Year's Get Ready With Me, I think it was. Um, 
this is like an illuminator but it's got a tiny bit of pigment to it and then I'm just using my finger and tapping that out if you want a tiny wee bit more shape back to your face all I'm going to do is take the tiniest amount of contour powder on a kind of domed fluffy brush and I'm just going to work this into the tops of the cheekbones here kind of where your ear is just to give the tiniest amount of definition back I'm also taking a tiny bit of that contour powder and just placing it through the crease of my eye just to bring a wee bit more definition back to them. So for brows obviously you want to make them look full but not too done up. So I'm going to go in with some coloured brow gel. I always take all the excess off of the brush especially if it's a coloured brow gel so that you have literally nothing on it. I'm just going to take that and run it through my brows starting more towards the tail end so that I get the most colour there and then I'll work forward. So you can see the difference that that brow gel makes so I'm not going to do anything more to this brow here because it doesn't need it. For lashes obviously you could just leave it at this and leave it super super natural. For me personally because my lashes stick like straight out I'm going to curl them and add a tiny tiny amount of mascara. I'm going to use brow mascara because it'll look a lot more natural than black does. So I'm first just curling my lashes just to help them stick up a little bit. Lovely. This is a trick that I learned from Goss makeup artist. He is amazing and I've watched him for a very long time. Take lots off of your brush and then go in and coat your lashes and it'll just give you a much more natural appearance. I'm also going to take the tiniest amount on my lower lashes as well, just to give them a bit more definition. For lips, all I'm going to do is apply some of that lip balm that I used on my cheeks and just blend it out. And then I'm just going to go ahead and apply lip oil just to get a wee bit of shine. So there you have it guys, that is this super easy no makeup makeup look inspired by Bridgerton all complete. And I think it looks beautiful. I just thought it was about time that I kind of went back to a more natural look because we've had it all except for natural over the past couple of months so I just yeah thought it was about time I did another natural makeup look. I think this makeup look is perfect for when you just want to look a bit more put together but not like you've put lots of effort in or you've got a face full of makeup on. Also perfect for summer because you just look healthy and radiant and glowy and sun-kissed. I thought this would be really fun to do because I know a lot of people have watched the series and in some cases have rewatched the series. Something about that kind of effortless beauty of it all just made me happy and I mean Julie Andrews narrates it so can't go wrong. <laughs> as always everything that I have used will be listed down below as well as all of my social media links. Make sure you go and give me a like and a follow on them and make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future uploads. Hope you have all enjoyed and I will see you in the next video. Bye! Why does it need to come to be a child? It ticked all the right boxes. It had lovely costumes, lovely hair, some lovely looking men in it. <laughs> Buy it, is that a word? I don't know. I can't speak. I like a state. What are you doing? My chin looks much better now. Much better. Much better. I mean, look at what came off. This looks suspect. <laughs> A child. Challenge accepted. Challenge complete. <laughs> Bass in your walk, head to toe, let your whole body talk.